Clubhouse is a super popular map, but most of you actually play it wrong. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you five tactics that you should try out in Clubhouse to better your gameplay. Let's get into it. The first strategy is this defensive castle strat for upstairs CC. The purpose of the strat is to stop people from getting below control so that you can have somebody with a nitro cell deny the plant from below. A lot of people, let's say buck players, sledge players, whatever it may be, will come in through this door through stock and play below here, but more importantly, they'll play below here. You don't want to allow this to happen. But primarily, the actual purpose of this strat is to deny the default plant, which is typically about right here. As you can see, when I shotgun open this floor right here, most people plant beside this bomb right here. So if you can play castle and have a mute player, or anybody with a nitro cell for that matter, playing below, you can easily have them nitro below the default plant whenever they decide to take the bomb site. These three castle barricades, castle 1, castle 2, and castle 3, prevent the attackers from actually pushing your guy below with a nitro cell, which is super powerful. You can also have holes here to watch the doorway, or holes here, to watch the wall walk in as well as the rafter stairs walk up and you can also give yourself a rotate in case you want to play at lower garage and help the person in rafters overall you want your three castle barricades downstairs your fourth and final castle barricade is optional but i like to put it on the cc window with a bp right here to watch the breach this will help you whenever you're below and you're trying to deny the plant by giving you information on where they're planting Overall, this castle strat is a super basic and common strat, so let's move on to something that's not maybe as basic. The next strat is this Monty push for rafters. As a lot of you know, people love to play Azami for rafters, but what if I told you there was an easy way to counter it? Well, playing Monty is the easy way. As Monty, all you're going to do is break this barricade right here and show your presence on this doorway. You're not gonna push up too far and you're just gonna kinda put pressure to make the people in rafters scared. You're gonna wait for your teammates to open up the main wall right here. Once your team has opened this wall and only whenever they've opened this wall, maybe with the help of your EMP grenades just like so, then that is when you move from this door and you start actually pushing up the rafter stairs. Now watch out because a lot of people like to put frost mats on the staircase for this exact strategy in mind. But once you're up here and the wall is open, the person in rafters is most likely going to die. If you pair this up with somebody on your door or on the wall here, now they can't even flank you, meaning that you and the person on the wall can easily pinch and kill the person in rafters super easily. It's overall the best way that I've found to reliably and consistently counter the Azami strategy right here at hand. Your job as Monty also isn't to knife the person or to shoot the person. Really, it's just to make it to where the person on rafters is scared of you so that they run away and then the person on the wall shoots them through these head holes. But if they're not taking the bait and they're only taking a gunfight with your person on the wall, then you can unshield and reshield to scare them into thinking that you might be shooting them or knifing them to get them to turn their heads and ultimately get this player to shoot them. You just play Monty super, super passively here. Once that is done though, now it's time for you to get the bomb down. Hopefully you, or at least your thermite, has diffuser. This is where the hardest part comes in, trying to get into the bomb site. Typically, you'll have somebody on red stairs contesting you, but if your thermite, who has smokes to get the wall open, can smoke off your red door, you can just easily hop in. But if you can't do that, just sitting here, holding your shield, or unshielding and taking a gunfight to just kind of passively apply pressure, is also a pretty good strategy. Once you have the bomb down, you're playing Monty, so it's pretty much a free round win, and this strat can be super effective if done passively and correctly. But maybe Monty isn't really your speed. Well then maybe you should try this Ram strat. I understand that 1.5 times scopes are popular, so this one is for you fraggers. As Ram, this strat specifically is for attacking the basement. Now, the basement is really good for attackers if you can get vert correctly. As Ram, you can easily break this barricade from outside with your drone, activate your drone, and now you have vert on all of this hallway for absolutely free. If, of course, you don't hit that shelf. Ooh, went right past it. Perfect. As you can see, now I have vert on this entire hallway with just one drone, which is kind of cool. If you want to even double down on it, you can get your shotgun out right here, shotgun open this wall, and now you can even see it down this rotate that's typically right here as well. But that's not actually the main point of the strat. The main point of the strat as Ram is that you want to be repelling on this balcony right here. Specifically, you want to be looking through this chain. This specifically, if you didn't know, is called chain repel. Now on chain repel, you're going to just sit and bait anybody that comes up the main stairs or comes in through the bathroom door. This is really hard for attackers to gain control of. But if you make vert like I just told you and immediately get on chain repel, the defenders are going to see that you're making vert in the hallway and they're going to assume that you're in kitchen or in the hallway. So any 
anybody that is on top main stairs or even bottom main stairs or in bathroom is immediately going to try to come up and kill you while you're making vert. You, sitting on Chain Repel, can easily kill them for absolutely free. Once you've baited a kill or you've sat on Chain Repel for long enough that you're confident that no one will swing you, you can immediately go into Kitchen. Next, you'll throw your Ram Gadgets somewhere in Kitchen. Personally, I like to throw one right here. This gets all of Back Armory, it gets the Feet Holes, it gets the Mini Rotate, and it gets the Main Rotate here. It also allows you to deny anybody trying to defuse the bomb and it allows you to see through this rotate into church. And then obviously you can put your third one going across like this, or you can use the two that I just said to go across like this and like this. But when you have a shotgun, I don't really see the need to do that when you can just make two holes and do the exact same thing. But truthfully, you really only need these two ram gadgets right here. This third one that's going along is pretty optional. Once you have a good vert with ram, with her drones, and with your shotgun as well, you should make it to where nobody can play inside of armory. This is where the fun part comes in. Typically, you'll have a teammate open up the hatch. But as you know, sometimes solo queue teammates can be a bit unreliable. So instead, if no one's opening up the hatch and dirt is soft, you can go through dirt instead. But if that's reinforced and your teammates don't get that, then you can just hail marry it and go down the main stairs. When you're on main stairs, typically as ram, you have smoke grenades. So you can smoke off the hallway here and then push to the right and get kills in church. Or you can smoke off the right push through long haul, go through the rotate, and then plant for free while you have teammates on vert to cover you. Or you can give the bomb to your teammate and you be on vert with your smoke grenades and cover your teammates who are planting. Either way, getting a plant down whenever you have this much vert should be super easy and reliable for you to do. Now I've given you an attacking basement strategy, now it's time to give you a defending basement strategy, which just so happens to be this amazing Goyo strat for basement. Now, as Goyo, you want to be bringing impact grenades. I have the TCSG just so I can make some rotates for you, but that's besides the point because really you should be running the vector. With that out of the way, let's go over the actual strat. First of all, you want to be barricading and putting a Goyo canister on the dirt door. This makes it to where if they come through dirt, they have to break this barricade, giving you a full course alarm in case they try to push you from dirt while you're doing the main strat, which we'll go over later. The Goyo also makes it to where they can't immediately rush dirt whenever they break the barricade, which is super good for you because it gives you enough reaction time to get out of where you are. The second Goyo needs to go somewhere on the left side in front of the main door here. This makes it to where if you have feet holes right here, the person in armory can still shoot the Goyo canister while also allowing the person in armory to shoot it as well, just in case anybody tries to rush down main. Your next Goyo canister will go somewhere on the church wall. Right here is typically fine. And then your last Goyo canister, as weird as it might look, is going to go all the way on secret stairs. Let me explain. As Goyo, you want to be impact tricking within the first minute of the round. If you're able to successfully impact trick through these holes to counter the Habana or the Ace, or even if you're not able to successfully impact trick, that doesn't really matter. It's just there to delay the initial hatch rush that usually comes over here. After you're done with that though, the main part of the strat is you're going to be playing inside of church or inside of gen. It doesn't really matter, you just want to be in this general area. The reason for this being is because if you get on top of this table and you put a hole right next to this reinforcement, you're able to shoot anybody that comes down secret stairs. More importantly, you're able to shoot that weird Goyo canister that you saw me place down earlier. If you know that they're coming down secret, you can shoot that Goyo canister super early, and then now you're able to hold any other place that you want to hold without necessarily having to worry about that side of the map. Once that Goyo canister has fully gone off though and they're able to push secret stairs then you could hold this angle and get some free kills or more importantly you can sit inside of gen and hold the control of this key area of the map but maybe they push moto instead well you can sit on this hole right here shoot the goyo canister and shoot anybody that drops either way super good strat you're also from here if you have a rotate right here or you just play at the door able to shoot this goyo canister maybe they're pushing down main well luckily for you you have a rotate that you can immediately use to go down here and shoot the goyo canister Either way, this strat, depending on where you play as Goyo, can be completely a failsafe to get free rounds in the basement. Instead of defending the basement though, let's say you're defending CC. For our final strat, you'll want to run some Fenrir. As Fenrir in the prep phase, because you have a bailiff, you want to be helping around with some general sight setup. Most importantly, the head holes here, and obviously the rotate that's over there. Once you've helped around with the general sight setup with your bailiff, there's two specific holes that I want you to make. First is the hole right here. This hole allows you to see anybody that's hopping in the CC window. 
Secondly is the hole right here, which needs to be a little bit higher than the first one that I just made. The reason for this being is if you break this chair, hop on this table, now you're able to see anybody that jumps in through the window here. Overall, two pretty good holes that you need as Fenrir, which I'll show you why later. Your first Fenrir mine should go right here. The reason that it goes right here and not down there is because one, this Fenrir mine, it still covers red stairs, but it also covers anybody that tries to walk up top red, just in case your red player dies. You also wanna pair this one specifically with barbed wire at the top of red stairs as well, just to slow them down so that anybody top red can easily swing and kill the person. The next mine is for the CC window. You wanna try to stuff it in between this TV and the wall so that the people on the plat wall won't be able to shoot it as easily. You just do this by throwing it like that. Oh, it broke the TV. Never mind. I think you can actually pick it up and put it a little bit deeper, but you get the idea. That TV should also cover it if they're on the wall. You also want barbed wire for this trap as well, because if they hop in the CC window and you have barbed wire here, not only are they blind and slow, but it's a lot harder for them to hop back out, guaranteeing you a free kill if you use the hole right here. These last three traps, though, don't need barbed wire, the first of one being the one that goes right here. This fender of mine will prevent anybody from walking in on the wall trying to get the plant down behind the bomb right here. Your fourth mine will go somewhere on this door right here. This will make it to where if you have any teammates playing in rafters, now they don't even need to peek the door, making it to where they can play a lot safer and more passively. All they have to do now is swing off of the Fenrir mine and get free kills. Your last Fenrir mine is going to go in cash room. It needs to go on the construction door, just like so. Now, with all five of these mines active, it covers every single possible entry point that the attackers could use to get into the bomb site. maybe excluding that wall right there. Which actually, hold on, I just discovered something new. You can literally just put the Fenrir mine on this side instead, and now whenever they walk in the door, they get stunned, and if they walk in the wall, they also get blinded, so never mind. You can put it there, and it actually covers that too. So now, you actually can cover every single entry point. Regardless, not only can you cover every single entry point, but let's go over which mines should be activated and when. Now, at the start of the match, the very first 30 seconds to a minute, you want the garage activated, you want top red activated, and you want construction activated. If anyone were to rush, these were the three places that they would try to rush. Now, once they get the wall open, if they're not pushing one of three of these places, you can deactivate one of these mines and activate the one for the wall. If they haven't opened the wall, or if they have opened the wall but they're not being aggressive, you can then activate the CC window if they're pushing the CC window. But as Fenrir, you just wanna be bouncing between these two spots and deactivating any one of the three main ones that you activated in the first part of the round as the order in which you should be activating the mines. Now, where is Fenrir should you be playing to maximize your potential? Well, typically, you have an Azami, so you don't want to be playing Rafters. You also could play Top Red, but typically, you have a teammate that's smart enough to play here, too. So, the best plan that I've devised is playing inside of Cash Room. With Cash Room, you can utilize the two holes that you made better than your teammates can, because obviously, you made them, so you know what they're used for. You can play off of this mine, you can play off of that mine, you can play off of this mine, while also having a rotate on red if you need to play off of this mine for the walk up here, or for the red stairs walk up here. Either way, Playing inside of cash allows you to play off of the most mines possible, while also playing around the holes that you made specifically for you that you know how to use. With that being said, if you play passively and only swing off of your mines and tell your teammates to do so also, it should be a free round win for the defense and for the strat specifically. That's it for this video though. Check out this next video where I did the exact same thing but on Oregon and let me know down in the comments what map I should do next. My name's Alka and I'll see you in the next video. Later.